Get ready! You're tuned in to Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T, bringing you the hottest trending topics on social media. Stay connected. Instagram.com slash Lovely Tea 2002. Hey, you guys. Welcome to another episode of Tea Time Unfiltered with your girl, Lovely T. Hey, you guys. I hope you guys are doing good. Yes, welcome. Welcome to the podcast. So we got some things that I want to talk about today. Um, So as you guys know, I've been on vacation. Um, It's been a lot going on back home in Minnesota. So I decided to get the kids and go away and they picked Florida. And, you know, I like Florida. I come here every now and then. It's been a while since I've been on vacation. Now, now, to be fair, the last time I was here was in 2019 at NeNe NeNe Leakes' event. And I haven't really traveled since then because of all these COVID restrictions and everybody being on lockdown and everything else. But I've noticed a lot of just weird shit that's gone on while being on vacation and just, you know, with other people that I spoke about. And I feel like a lot of these companies are taking advantage of this so-called COVID situation. Now, a lot of people think that, you know, Florida is in the South and people are just free to come and go maskless and everything else. That's really not the case. I don't care what's being said on the news. They're making you wear a mask in every building, in the elevator, throughout the hotel. Damn it. I saw people swimming, swimming in the damn ocean with a mask on. It's like really... Can you take the mask off? You're outside. No one's near you. I mean, it's gotten that bad to where we've been conditioned. But one thing I've noticed is that the customer service and the price hikes are ridiculous. And they're using the whole guise of COVID. So we've been staying in this suite. And they're like, oh, well, we really can't come and clean your room every day. You have to call us and let us know 24 hours in advance to come clean. And so I'll call them like, hey, we need more bath towels. We need more this and that. And they literally just come to the door. They're standing like two feet away with their mask on. And they just, you know, literally chuck the towels at you. Like, here you go. I'm like, so is nobody going to come in here and clean? You know, we're having to set the trash outside. I'm like, y'all are using a lot of excuses for COVID to just not do what you're supposed to do. So with that being said, there's a lot of folks here, too, from the Twin Cities. So my homegirl, uh, she flew down here. There's a few people. A lot of people from Minnesota are here for some reason. So we've all been kicking it and wandering the streets and everything else. So um, we were getting ready to take an Uber, and they've totally changed the structure of Uber. Now, before, you could have up to four, sometimes five people in just a regular car, because somebody could sit in the passenger side. But now what Uber is saying is that for the safety of the driver, you cannot sit next to them. Everybody has to be in the back seat and they will only allow three people in the back seat. So you can't even squeeze in four people. Um, So you can either order Uber for a three seater or a five seater. But get this, the price of Uber is ridiculous. Now, I was here in 2017 for my birthday, me, my sister, my bestie, and we all came down here to South Beach and we kicked it for the weekend. We took Ubers everywhere, okay? Even I had a damn rental car, it didn't make sense because there was no parking. So we took Ubers everywhere. Those Ubers cost between $5 and $10 to go to where we needed to go on South Beach. But what I've noticed now just to go from like South Beach to downtown Miami, because we went on some of the tours and things like that, they were literally charging $89 for an Uber ride. It's like, are you kidding me? To go 10 minutes up the street, 89 bucks? And it doesn't matter if you had three people with you or if it's just yourself. My girl, when she came to come visit us in our room, she took an Uber back to where her room was at. It cost her 80 bucks. And their excuse is, oh, we have to raise the rates because of COVID. Oh, we have to raise the rates because it's more busy. So a lot of these companies are taking advantage. Even in Minnesota, like when you know we go to the dealership to go get things done on the car, usually there's snacks, there's tea, there's coffee. Oh, all of that stuff has been put up supposedly due to COVID. It's like, what the hell are y'all talking about? You know, I ordered a DoorDash. They couldn't come up here because supposedly due to COVID. So then I had to go all the way downstairs to go get my food. You know, it's like everything is being supposedly behind COVID and it's starting to piss me the hell off. Because the thing is, we're paying even more money for stuff, but for less service. And it's really insane when you think about it. So um, I just wanted to come on here and talk about just the the push and the propaganda that I'm seeing. And so y'all have been on it in the Discord. Shout out to my Discord family. 
I mean, the if you have not been in the COVID facts and conspiracies chat room, definitely make sure you go and check it out because the information, the wealth of information in there is just amazing. And so there's just been so many different articles that I want to point out to you guys. So here goes one right here. 5,800 fully vaccinated people have tested positive for COVID-19. The next article says women blood clotting death in NSW likely linked to the AstraZeneca COVID-19 vaccine. This next one says they don't even care to hide the lies anymore. And it says CDC vaccinated people should still avoid travel, even though you've been vaccinated. This is the one that really disturbed when I seen this. It says that the St. Vincent volcano evacuation ships only open to COVID-19 vaccinated residents. How is this okay? And I talked about this last week in my stream about all these volcanoes that have been erupting all over the world. And so they're really, so now they're saying that they're only going to help people who can show that they have been vaccinated. That is sickening that people are being denied health and medical care and, you know, supplies and things that they need if they cannot prove that they're vaccinated. This is coming to a state near you. If they're doing this already in St. Vincent and over there in the UK and in Ireland and other places like that, it's definitely going to roll out here. Um, another article that was posted, Brazil urges women to delay pregnancy until the coronavirus pandemic has passed over new claims of a new variant is more dangerous to expectant mothers. Now this same variant that they're saying is super dangerous, they're also saying it's more dangerous to teenagers and young people. It's insane. Let me go ahead and read to you guys one more. Now this last one says a third Pfizer shot is likely says CEO, okay? So remember, it was supposed to be two shots. You get one, then you wait, I think, two weeks and you get your second shot. Like I said, many people in my family, they've had to get the shot because of their job. A lot of my, you know, subscribers have had to get it, not because they wanted to, but because of their job. Some people got it just because they're like, fuck it, I want to just, you know, be free and be able to go here and there. But it seems to me like they keep moving the goalpost. And this is really disturbing because, again, like I said, I'm down here in Florida. And you would think with all the folks who have been vaccinated, you could come and go as you want. You know, you got the vaccine shot, but that's not the case. They're still telling folks to wear a mask and, you know, to not travel. Well, what is the whole point of people getting this vaccine if it's not, you know, I'm not saying it's going to be a cure-all, but that'd be like telling folks, well, you got the flu shot, now you need to sit at home, you can't do nothing, even though I got the flu shot. Isn't that the point of a vaccine that you're supposed to be able, that you're supposed to be able to still live your normal life and, you know, do your day-to-day? And that doesn't seem to be happening. I feel like they keep moving the goalposts. So for me, when I see the goalposts being moved and they're saying, even though you have the vaccine, you still need to wear a mask. Even though you have the vaccine, only three people can be in this Uber. Even though you have the vaccine, you can only do this and that. So it's almost like, well, what is the real, what, what's the real tea? I want to get down to the nitty gritty. What is really going on here? Because to me, it's no longer about this vaccine. To me, it just, it seems a lot more sinister. Now, if you guys do not know, over the weekend, they have been promoting this like since Thursday, that NBC was going to have this whole um, live special called Roll Up Your Sleeves. And it was being hyped, especially to the black community, honey. And um, Sierra was one of the main celebrities, her and her husband, Russell Wilson. They were there. They were promoting it and telling folks, you know, to come watch the special and encouraging people to be vaccinated. Um, Michelle Obama was there, President Obama, um, Shaquille O'Neal, Charles Barkley. It was like a big shindig and it went down yesterday. I didn't watch it. I've just been watching the clips um, that were sent to me. So I want you guys to go ahead and just check out some of this. And I'm going to come back with the rest of my commentary. The COVID-19 vaccines are made to save lives and bring back the moments we all miss most. That's why we're teaming up with Attention and Civic Nation on April 18th for a special night of entertainment on NBC. We're going to encourage America to get vaccinated. Tune in to Roll Up Your Sleeves at 7 p.m. Eastern Time and learn more at madetosave.org. Love about it. Listen, uh, I appreciate you guys doing this. You know, part of our goal here is to make sure that everybody who's been going through so much in COVID 
understands the need and the urgency of our communities getting vaccinated. Michelle and I, we've been lucky. Michelle's mom, she just stayed put in Chicago, didn't leave her apartment. You know, the girls, as frustrating as it was, they, you know, really followed uh, protocol in terms of making sure that they took this seriously. Now, as the vaccine becomes more available, I want to make sure that our communities, particularly ones African-American, Latino, as well as young people, understand that this will save lives and allow people to get their lives back to normal. And the, the sooner we get more people vaccinated, the better off we're going to be. Mr. President, I get my second vaccine shot tomorrow. I Good. cannot wait. I think it's important for us to keep talking about the vaccine. So I'm telling all my friends, yo, man, forget what happened back in the day. Every black person, uh, please go out and get vaccinated. I am vaccinated. Uh, my family has underlying conditions. They are also vaccinated. But I'm not worried about me or my family. I'm worried about the average mom and dad. First of all, a lot of the underlying conditions, things like diabetes, uh, you know, folks who, who've got pre-existing conditions, there is more of that in communities of color than there is generally, which means we're more vulnerable. Number two, a lot of young people think, well, you know what, even if I get COVID, it's going to be like a bad cold. But part of what we're seeing now is there's a different strain of the virus has come over. That's now the dominant variant, and it's actually hitting young people harder than the original version. We don't know the kinds of long-term effects that we're having. There's some folks who get it, and six months later, they're still not feeling quite right. Part of the reason to get vaccinated is because it makes everybody safer. And it's the same reason why, by the way, you know, we don't have things like polio anymore. Measles used to kill people all the time. The reason we don't see that is because kids get vaccine before they even go to school. And the last point I'll make, you know, Chuck, you mentioned history about things like Tuskegee. The irony is when you know about the Tuskegee experiment, what was going on there was the government withheld treatment that was available for black men for syphilis. It wasn't that they made them sick by giving them medicine. It's that they didn't give them medicine they needed. And so here's a situation where if the medicine's available, we need to take it. And uh, look, if the wealthy and the powerful in our society are all lining up to get shots, that means everybody should know it's a good thing to get. All right. So you guys just saw the clip of Sierra and her husband promoting the show. You guys saw the conversation with Charles Barkley, President Obama and Shaquille O'Neal. And there was a lot of people. When I tell you that the damn celebrity list was long. OK, it was a lot of people involved in this. And I'm not feeling this. OK. Yo, what's up? Baby, let's go. Hey, tea sippers To listen to the rest of this podcast, please go to Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, Tuned In, or AnchorFM.com, which is a free podcasting site. Thank you guys so much for the support, and stay tuned for the next video.